Also noteworthy in both catalogs are a handful of etchings by Giovanni Piranesi, who was an Italian printmaker, originally trained as an architect. Though he completed very few architectural projects, he produced several hundred etchings, most of which appeared in series, the two best known series being the Views of Rome or the Vedute di Roma and the Carceri or the Prison series. And lots 88, 89, and 94 are three great examples from the Views of Rome. In all, there are 135 etchings in the Views of Rome series by Piranesi. And these range from very well-known scenes like the Colosseum and the Piazza Navona and St. Peter's Basilica to lesser-known subjects like the Falls at Tivoli. The wonderful thing about Piranesi's Views of Rome is that he shows these well-known ruins, ruins which were well-known since the Renaissance, and there was an interest in them since the Renaissance, but he imbues them with sort of a grandeur and he places figures throughout these scenes and there's sort of a, you know, a, a second storyline going on. It's not just about a, a straightforward view of the Colosseum, but if you look in the, the borders, in the, usually in the lower corners, you'll see figures conversing uh, what I see as everyday snippets of life in late 18th century Rome. Another reason why Piranesi inserted these figures and these scenes into these views is that they, they elevated the views. There's, there's no way, if you look at the scale, that the figures next to the Colosseum are actually that small. What he's doing in a two-dimensional image is making these things so grandiose and gigantic to to really clobber the viewer over the head with their importance. One thing I like about these views of Rome is that you consider Piranesi's training as an architect and you look at his, the fluidity of his line and sort of the, the, the flamboyance of his drawing style. And it's hard to consider that this is somebody who would have been comfortable coming up with straightforward architectural plans of that nature. He's somebody certainly that had an understanding of architecture but who broke away from that mold and created these these images mostly out of his own imagination. Certainly he had a springboard for the views of Rome but within those views he added elements uh, that were never there in real life and created uh, really singular visions that nobody in his time was making. Part two of the sale continues where we left off with old master prints. There are a couple hundred lots of old master prints, including more prints by Rembrandt and other artists from the 15th century through the 18th century. And then there are sections devoted to prints by 19th century printmakers, American printmakers, and European printmakers. Among the 19th century prints in the sale is lot 311, an etching by Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot of Venus clipping the wings of Cupid. It dates from around 1869 to 1870. This is an extremely scarce etching by Corot. It's known in only two examples, one now in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris and the impression we're offering in this auction. Corot is an important artist in the 19th century in that he bridges the early 19th century academic tradition and introduces the late 19th century Impressionism. He is sort of the father to Impressionists such as Monet, Degas, and Cezanne. In the loosely and fluidly rendered nature of this etching, it's not hard to imagine Corot's contribution to Impressionist printmakers such as Degas and Pizarro, who adopted this style. While it seems difficult to put Impressionism in terms of printmaking, and especially black and white etchings, it's not to say that Impressionists did not make color prints, 
it, it clearly is possible when you look at an image like this. There's definitely a movement, a shimmering movement within the image that Corot achieves with his line and drawing, and uh, a sense of the play of light on the on the figures and in the background of the trees. Uh, it does shimmer somehow. This image to me, it's you know not only the the line, but the the warmth of the paper that this was printed on. It all has impressionistic qualities. You can only imagine what Corot would have achieved if he was a printmaker who worked in color prints. Leading from the pre-impressionist work of Corot, we have Lot 315, which is a monotype by Degas of a woman in her bath. And it dates from around 1895. This is a counterproof of a very well-known monotype that Degas later hand-colored in pastels, which is now in the Musée d'Orsay. To make this monotype, Degas inked a copper plate and put a piece of paper over the plate and ran it through the press. That paper picked up the design that he had drawn in ink on the plate. He then took another sheet of paper and pressed that onto the impression from the plate to create what's known as a counterproof. And that is what we are offering, the counterproof impression from that monotype. The monotype technique lends itself to Degas' style in its softness and in the direct rendering of subjects. It's, it's basically a drawing, it's a printed drawing. And we know that Degas considered them that way because like the impression of this that's in the Musée d'Orsay, he would add colors to them to make them more finished drawings. Adding to the importance of this print is the fact that it descended in the family collection up until the middle of the 20th century. And you can see that in the collector's ink stamp in the lower right. We think of prints as multiples, and in most cases they are, but there is something astounding about having a singular or one of just a few impressions of an image like this by somebody who's considered one of the most important impressionist artists.